Did you find Justice Scalia's dissent in Morrison versus Olson persuasive? I wasn't on the court. I know. You were, an acad you were, the, you were his audience. I, I, I didn't teach uh, in that field. I, I taught in a very, very exciting field, uh, economic regulation. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't. I thought it was an excellent dissent, but I didn't read it until later. So uh, there we are. I, uh, many of it. I, I like reading his. He likes my dissents. No, no, no I don't know. I, no, I write a dissent. I, I write a dissent, and first I think, you know, it's going to persuade them. <laughs> I mean, it hasn't before. But <laughs> I go home and say to my uh, Joanna, I say, well, you know, I've written a dissent, and, and uh, uh, you know, it's. I know. I, 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 this time it really will. And uh, then she says, <laughs> she says, I've heard that one before. And and and, and uh, then uh, pretty soon that. Sometimes quickly, sometimes I, I shift from it will persuade them to it should have persuaded them, <laughs> and then uh, from it should have persuaded them, I say, well, I've written it, haven't I? I mean, you know, and uh, who knows? Maybe there is someone who will uh, gather benefit from it. It's it's pretty hard when you when you think through something. Uh, 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 carefully, and then you. Uh, I hope everyone's turned his cell phone off here. <laughs> This seems to be ringing, so I'm going to turn it off. <laughs> but, uh, all right. Sorry, go ahead. You know, there's an old saying that a new justice makes a new court. Have you uh, um, noticed a lot of changes? We've got two now. Oh, it's always nice to have new colleagues. Uh, you miss the old ones. Um, I, I wouldn't say it changes the whole court. It, it, it's it's. Uh, it, it changes some of the dynamics, some of the group dynamics. Um, yeah, I, I guess it's it's fair to say it changes the court. Have you noticed a difference at, at argument or even in more discussion in your conferences? How's how's it different up there? I, I think the chief is a little uh, a little more lenient at, at conference, but I think he'll get over that. <laughs> <laughs> So he lets Justice Breyer talk more. <laughs> I just think it takes a certain period in office to acquire the kind of arbitrary manner that is appropriate for a chief justice. <laughs> How have you seen the new chief difference in no, the it's, old? It's fine. I mean, we, 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 we all get on well, and, and uh, there is a little bit more discussion. We don't know. But, I mean, he, he's, he, yeah, I, I like it. I, I think it's fine. I mean, I like a little bit more discussion. It's marginally, marginally more. So is more discussion after you have more interaction, after everyone has their say? Yeah, a little bit more, a little bit more. Does that mean Justice Breyer does more talking? <laughs> I think it, it means all of us are able to do more talking. Look, okay, there's a very good rule there for really any organization. We've had this, and most of you know it, in, in the conference, the, the rule is uh, we go around in order, and it starts with the chief, and then uh, Justice Stevens, Justice Scalia, uh, Justice Kennedy, uh, uh, Justice Souter, Justice Thomas, uh, uh, Justice Ginsburg, me, and, and, and now Justice Alito. We go in order and briefly and succinctly uh, state our points of view, and then there's back and forth discussion. The rule is no one speaks twice until any, everyone speaks once. I was junior, so that benefited me, and it still does. But uh, that's a very good rule. I think it promotes good feeling. I, I, th I think everyone feels uh, uh, fairly treated, and, and uh, uh, no one doesn't, no one goes without a say. And uh, I, I like it. I think that works well. And I, I'd say you're right in saying now back and forth. There's a little bit more back and forth, as long as you feel it's productive. Well, we, when you say you feel it's productive, the former chief wrote a book in which he said that, that conference is really a misnomer, that it isn't, uh, it isn't an attempt to persuade one another. It is, it is mostly uh, each justice setting forth his or her views, and uh, um, the major function of it is, is not to change other people's votes because they come in with their minds made up, but rather... Uh, you take notes so that you know the theories that the other justices have of the case. If you are so unfortunate as to be assigned the case, you will know how to write it in a way that will get at least four other votes, which is the name of the game, right? Uh, 
I, I'm not telling you this. This, this, this was in the chief's in the chief's book, and it, it was an accurate description. And, and if if you're under the impression that there is a a major effort to persuade one another at these conferences, uh, you're, you're mistaken. In the days when I first came on the court, uh, we we were hearing twice as many cases as we hear today. Uh, so in one week we would hear 12 cases. We would discuss and decide eight of those cases on Friday morning. We would discuss and decide those eight cases and vote on the cert petitions that had accumulated over the last week and be done by lunch. So if you have these image of these philosophers, you know, reasoning with one another that, that this is not what is going on. And I doubt that it is what could possibly go on uh, with as large a group as nine. It, it's, it, it's just just too cumbersome. Uh, when I came to the Supreme Court from the Court of Appeals, I, I, I told my former colleagues, there's good news and there's bad news up here. The good news is you don't have to take every case. You know, in the Court of Appeals, you have to take it. It's an appeal from the district court. The bad news is every time you take one, it's in bank. <laughs> all, all nine of you. And boy, you know, when you sound that you hated the in banks on the Court of Appeals, it's so much easier to sit with two other judges and you can really, you know, knock the case back and forth and really, you can't do it with nine people. It's just not doable. And, and Holmes said that. He said, you know, after the court went above five, it, 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 it just became a different enterprise. I, I think conference does, I mean, it, views change sometimes. I, I've seen views change and I've seen the way in which people see the case change. People do listen to each other. They're not, and, and you can say a great deal in a short time. I learned uh, well, a good lesson in a way from, and it's worth from uh, uh, Chief Justice Rehnquist who, soon pointed out it isn't the quantity of what you say, it's the quality. <laughs> and uh, uh, you can say a lot in a few words where you're focused and thinking just about the main point that you're trying to explain to people. So there doesn't have to be a long discussion. And people do listen uh, for uh, uh, something to shape uh, a view and, and sometimes really, uh, sometimes, not a lot. But, but sometimes really change uh, an opinion. Well, on that, I think we're going to have to say thank you to both of our justices, and thank you all for coming. Thank you so much, Justice Thank you very much. Justice Breyer, thank you.